So thank you for your questions. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Scott. So moving on with our agenda, we have one more <coughs> topic of old business to address, which is policy review and revision. Sue. Uh, the policies are before you for the second reading. Um, I think you all had an opportunity to look at them at the last meeting. And I'm not aware of any other questions or comments coming before the policy review committee. So, having said that, I move we adopt the second reading list. It's in our package. I'll second that motion. Okay. Discussion. <coughs> I have one question on GCOS, evaluation of coaches. What about volunteer coaches and coaches who are not? Well, let's take the volunteer coaches. Non-stipend coaches. Non-stipend coaches, yeah. All co it, it's in reference to all coaches. All coaches. All coaches should be evaluated whether they get the stipend, whether they're a teacher or a parent. Okay. Well, all, all coaches. Or none of the above. Yes. You have you have coaches who are neither teachers nor parents. Not correct. Not correct. Not correct. Not correct. Yes. Oh, they're parents, but maybe they're not, not parents. But not parents of <coughs> coaches. Maybe not be evaluated. But they work at the Lakes Region Community College. <laughs> there is at least one that I know of. Yes. Okay. That one. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So the entire slate of um, policy. Has passed. Right, and as you know, some are a consolidation of policies, some are the elimination of old policies, and that's all uh, spelled out in the in the uh, the key. Okay, so now on the agenda, it's time for public comment. Uh, if you, uh, since we have already had public comment and questions on the superintendent issue and on the budget presentation, I'm asking for public comment on any of the other issues that we've discussed in tonight's meeting. So if you have a comment, uh, please uh, state your name and address. And, excuse me? I think if they want to make a comment on anything, they can. Oh, okay. Yeah. But again, it's comments. Okay, well then I, then, I, then I stand corrected then. Then, then, then uh, but this is, then this is, then let me, uh, I'll, I'll read the guidelines here just to be clear. So, um, so we will have public comment on anything we've discussed tonight, but uh, and, and please state your name and address, but this is, um, the purpose of this is to give citizens uh, a voice and for, to hear what you, have, what you have to say, but it's not for question and answers. So, given those guidelines, who would like to make a comment? Yes, sir, in the back. Well, I had my hand up earlier under the Warren article, and um, I thought perhaps I'd add something now, if you don't mind. My name is George Hurt. I did serve for Guilford and the representative, the House Representative, from 94 to 98. And I want to be perfectly clear on this. The legislation in 1996 was clear on 194C5. And that was that, you know how that reads, reference to a superintendent or a supervisor picked by the board or the voters. There was no intent on the legislative part to add any type of cumulative number of students or buildings, which the, uh, Dr. Fillion had referred to in, in, in Superintendent Minico's letter that he received from her. Now, that may have occurred under administrative rules, which they can do, but not necessarily the intent of the legislature. Now, they may have discussed that in committee, but when I recall this legislation, it was clear to give the voters a right to make a decision to not have a superintendent, but something different of that. So, despite your tenacious argument to the contrary, I would argue that the legislative intent was real in that regard. So thank you for, the, uh, thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to add that, you know, that letter that 
seems to imply that if we decide to go this route, if the board decided to follow the will of the people and not go rogue, then it wouldn't be approved by the state for some reason or another. But the simple fact is, it's been approved by the state. It's the only plan that was submitted to the state and approved. That is that that is the plan. It we don't need state approval at this point. Right, you're, you're you're acting without state approval right now, and that's something to consider. I mean, right now you're you're not in the letter of the law at all. You you're not acting. You're not you're not following a plan that was approved by the voters and the state. In fact. The only plan that was approved by the voters and the state doesn't include the position of a superintendent. That's something to think about. Shelley Boucher, Potter Hill Road. I would like to thank the budget, um, the school board, for putting my son's education in front of um, the tactics that a lot of people in this community use to cut their taxes and this and that and the other. I would like to comment that uh, I have family in Texas and New Mexico that's property values are down. I'm sure glad that it's all Guilford superintendent's fault. They'll be glad to hear that. And um, that Warren article, there was numerous taxpayers that didn't even come out and vote because it was advisory only, and we felt like it was a bunch of blowhards just at it again. Thank you. Anyone else? Corey Intervail Road, um, as I notice the media is here in force as usual, I would just like to make a comment that I hope that besides the discussion about the Warren article and everything else that went on today, they take the literary space to acknowledge the student that got the Silver Award. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I've known her since I've lived in Guilford when she was the director of the squeeze school at Gunstock. And she actually also babysat my son at various points. And her acknowledgments and some of the other things that are not so controversial and that make this a good school district and make this a good town to live in. One of the options we had when I got married was whether we would reside in Guilford or up north. And we decided to keep our kids in school here in Guilford because of the class of education they got, because of the community and because of everything else that makes Guilford what it is. Now, I understand there are people that are just, you know, disapprove of what's been going on here in the town and stuff like that, but this all stemmed from, I believe, an attempt to cut the school budget by approximately $170,000. And even though I was told in the budget committee meetings that it was not the budget committee's attempt to dictate how the school board would use that money, they kept going after that same $170,000, which I think is the exact amount of money it was allowed for the superintendent. 175. So 175. I'm sorry. I'm getting old, and you know I don't remember numbers as, as good as I used to. But having that not been approved or not gone through the budget committee like they wanted to, they came forth with this unclear Warren article to try and get rid of the superintendent. Why didn't they do it on all the other past opportunities? This thing has been in effect for 13 years. <coughs> They've had numerous of times, times when the superintendent cha position changed. Why didn't they come forward then and do this? <coughs> Suddenly, because of a couple people on the budget committee, and I was at a couple budget committee meetings when this was raised, that they felt that this was the way to get their, want, their will through. And, you know, like some people said here tonight, it is what it is. If you don't like it, there's probably a bus leaving Laconia in the morning. You can put your property up for sale. But Guilford is what Guilford is, and that's what makes it nice. We have things like Gunstock, we have the lake, what a beautiful town beach, and we have a school district that I think does a fine job. I've gotten two children through the school district. One is a major accountant for a major law, uh, county firm in New York. The other is on his ninth year in the military and doing very well, and he's going to meet. And my third son, or my third child, second son, will be graduating this June. And I'm proud of all three of them. And I'm proud of the job that the school district did and the teachers here did for them. Thank you. Yes. Kevin Roy, Guilford Ave. Um, just looking ahead to 11 months down the road and seeing these past elections and the poor turnout we had, 
Uh, we didn't have a lot of candidates. Uh, no offense to anyone, but you basically signed up and you were in. Um, I'd like to know if, or just request that Sue Allen and Kurt Weber <clears throat> decide fairly soon and make it public knowledge if you'll be running again for school board so that you don't have to wait until two weeks before the elections to let people know that, look, we could use some more candidates. I know Mr. Murphy has stepped up to run uh, for school board. I wouldn't be surprised if there's another ex-budget committee member <clears throat> who decides to run. So again, I, I'd hate, I, I think you've both done a fantastic job, and I know, Sue, you've been doing this a long time. But if you could, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you could let it be known somewhat, you know, fairly soon, so that maybe some other people would like to uh, put their name in. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Dale Dormady, just a couple of comments. Uh, I wish you all would have done this presentation that you did tonight uh, before the vote. And I know based on your first slide that you probably wish you had also. Uh, but it's, it's that sort of information that I think pretty much everybody could have benefited from, whether they felt they were well informed prior to voting or not. This couldn't have hurt. So hopefully going forward, and I know you plan on having a session to deal with uh, the cost per student levels. Uh, what, what I look forward to during this coming year is holding, you know, all of you on this board as well as the new superintendent responsible for those sorts of things, the uh, cost per student. <coughs> I don't know if, in the same way with this warrant article, I don't know if how many people in this room or in the community really understand what's driving it. And we need to understand what's driving it in order to determine why it is what it is. You know, why is it so high? That's a very legitimate question. So I look forward to holding you all responsible, including the superintendent, for those sorts of explanations. So when we are presented with decisions as a voting body in the future, we have a full complement of information. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to agree with Mr. Dormady that we don't know the full factors driving the cost per pupil and the, the budget to skyrocket. We know there's fuel. We know there's insurance costs. We know there's a lot of things out of your control, and we're not criticizing that at all. Um, I do believe, in, and that's part of, that gets to the crux of the whole superintendent issue, is that we know we, I, I, I'm in the trans transportation industry. I buy diesel. Believe me, it's hurting. I, it's, we understand this, but we cut corners in other, sp other places. I'm not saying cut corners in education, but maybe we can enact better biz business practices in our purchasing. We can figure out ways to save money elsewhere, and, and that's where having more of a business person than a teacher making business decisions wouldn't hurt. You've got an amazing group of principals, uh, extremely competent teachers. Last meeting you had several of them in the front row speaking on, uh, on the kneecap scores and how they evaluate the results. And I, I was immensely impressed. Um, it, I, I think that y you really need to tap that. I mean, they, they can run the education aspect of the school. Your, your uh, curriculum director, your, your assistant principals, your principals, your, your, your I'm imagining that you have department heads as well. And I'm not, my wife was a public education teacher for 15 years. She's nationally board certified, has a master's in education. Believe me, I've been around it. I've spent a lot of nights cutting out laminate. And uh, it's always the same thing. Administration is, you know, you're top heavy on administration. It's every school district. It's not just this school district. And if you had somebody more business minded, they can figure out ways to save money. Um, there's a, I sold trucks to a uh, district in uh, Marion County, Florida, as a matter of fact, where they had a warehouse filled with paper. They bought paper once a year, toilet paper, Kleenex, paper towels, printer paper, 
and they had a truck that went every day from the warehouse, dropped off each day that day's ration into the schools. They saved a ton of money. No, none of the school, there wasn't enough in the ration for anybody to waste any. I mean, we need to think outside the box. Thank you. Okay, then uh, we will move on to new business. Um,